we're going to set up most of our trig functions as proportions. That means, yes, we're going to be cross multiplying. Now, we still haven't got into what sine, cos, and tan are useful for. Let's just make sure we know how to use them, and then we'll get into where they're useful. So, as I said, I want to turn these into a proportion so I can solve it using cross multiplying. If I put this side over 1, we now have a cross multiplying question. And rather than having to write sine of 30 degrees each time, I'm going to evaluate that on my calculator. Sine of 30 degrees gives me 0 0.5 over 1 equals x over 10. Cross multiply 1 times x and 0.5 times 10. So 1 times x just gives me x and 0 0.5 times 10 gives me 5. So the value of x in there is 5. Spoiler alert. Right now, we're solving for what will be a side of a triangle. Let's do the next one. Turn it into a proportion. Turn cos of 60 degrees into a decimal. Cos of 60 degrees is also 0 0.5. It's going to be over 1 equals 10 over x. Let's cross multiply. 0 0.5 times x equals 1 times 10, which is 10. Divide both sides by 0 0.5, and my x equals 20. One last example, same thing, turn it into a proportion. Now let's figure out what that decimal is. So tan of 83, now it's going to give me a whole bunch of decimals. We're going to be keeping three decimal places. So tan of 83 is 8.144. Let me rewrite everything else down from that. Next, I'm going to cross multiply. Divide both sides by 8.144. In this case, x equals 0 0.9. After rounding, of course. Let's move into these questions. Here, my unknown is the angle that goes inside the sine function. I know everything to the right, but I don't know that angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that fraction on the right. So 5 divided by 10 equals 0 0.5. So that gives me sine of m equals 0 0.5. Now I need to figure out which angle would go into sine to give me a ratio of 0 0.5. So in order to do that, we're gonna to have to work backwards. So essentially, we're going to do the inverse sine of 0 0.5. In this case, m equals the inverse sine, so it's sine to the negative one of 0 0.5. Well, we know how to do that. We do second function sine of 0 0.5, and that gives you your m. In this case, the inverse sine of 0 0.5 equals 30. And that is going to be a degree because remember, m is inside the sine, and you always put a degree inside the sine function. Let's do the next one. It's cos, it works the exact same way. Start by dividing that fraction. 10 divided by 25 gives me 0 0.4. So cos of m equals 0 0.4. So I'm going to do the inverse cos of 0 0.4. m equals cos to the negative 1 of 0 0.4. Run that through my calculator. Inverse cos of 0 0.4 is going to give me 66.4 degrees. And tan, same thing, divide out that fraction, even though it's decimals in it as well. Tan of m equals 1.524. Keep three decimal places if you've got more than that. We're going to do the inverse tan, so m equals the inverse tan, so tan to negative 1, of 1.524. In this case, m equals 56.7 degrees. 